All right, y'all, what to do, what it is, and what's happening, man? This is your boy Trey with Game Day with Trey, and I'm going to come here and give you a quick update or reaction to my projections and Mike Clay's actual projections for the 2023-2024 season for the AFC East quarterbacks. All right, this will be a, hopefully, an eight to four part segment, okay, where I will go through division or go through uh, conference and let you know exactly what is going on quarterback versus quarterback who's better who's got it who's got the win probability who doesn't all right so let's get started first and foremost we're going to start off with the bottom of the barrel bottom of the barrel in the AFC East I am sorry to every single New England Patriot fan out there but this has got to be what it's got to be. I can't lie to you right here because that means I'm going to lie to you in, in your face. And I'll never do that. So, bottom of the barrel, Mac Jones. Now, Mac Jones had a troubled year last year for multiple reasons. Uh, whether you look at the fact that he had Matt Patricia as his offensive coordinator and they switched through five different offenses throughout the season. Or if you look at the rash of injuries, plus he got injured, plus he was actually battling for the quarterback position with Bailey Zappi, a, a, a fifth or sixth round pick. OK, and Bailey Zappi was swinging with him, man. Not no fading, faking the funk on that or nothing like that. Bailey Zappi was actually getting with Mac Jones for that quarterback slot. So uh, at the end of the day, man, when you got Mac Jones coming out throwing for two thousand nine hundred and 97 yards, 14 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. Those numbers look horrible. When I say horrible, I mean horrible, y'all. And that's the kind of stuff that you kind of get when you're dealing with somebody that is first off young, second off dealing with Bill Belichick's offense. And, I mean, call it what it is. It was chaos last year. All right? So, hopefully he will be able to bounce back like has been projected by Mike Clay. Mike Clay has actually said that he's supposed to be, this year, he's supposed to be good for 3,358 yards, 17 touchdowns, but once again, double-digit interceptions, he's going to hit the 11, or I'm sorry, 12 mark this year, is what Mike Clay says. He'll be uh, good for 195 points in PPR, and he's the 27th-ranked quarterback in the NFL, uh, as far as Mike Clay is concerned. Well, I mean, I don't even know what more I got to say. We we will go into a uh, win probability, win loss type thing later on. But when you're looking at the bottom of the barrel quarterback for the AFC East, it, it's got to be Mac Jones. It, it doesn't matter whether they go get Kayshawn Boutte, which they have already went, went and drafted him, or you go get uh, D Hop, man, uh, or you go get Cook. I mean, eventually something has to give. Now, at the end of the day, I want everyone to also remember that Bill O'Brien is the same offensive coordinator that Mac Jones had at Alabama under Nick Saban. So this is the offensive coordinator who taught him everything he knows offensively outside of what he learned in college or high school. So what that should translate into is success. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to be the most successful quarterback this year, but he should do better than that 2,900 and some odd yards. He should hit the 3,000-yard mark. He should give the Patriots an opportunity to be a wild card, possibly make it into the playoffs. But that's only because of Bill Belichick and that defense they put together as well. Now, if they go sign somebody like D-Hop or they go get Dalvin Cook, which they have the salary cap money for, they have, I, I would say, roughly 16 to $19 million in salary cap money right now, so they could actually make that move. But... You know, only time will tell. So now we get to the next one. Number three in my ranking in the AFC East, coming from the bottom to the top, is Tua. Now, Tua Tagovailoa has had a lot of issues with concussions, as have I. But, you know, that's part of football, okay? Uh, I honestly believe that the jujitsu training will help Tua, okay? Tom Brady did that. And look where he got him. He got injured those first few time, years. That one year where he tore his uh, ACL and had that freak hit from uh, Houston uh, versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Or the minor concussions 
that he's had. And if you ask his wife, major concussions that he's had. All right. So, uh, yeah, I would hope that Tua would be having a more successful year this year and actually seeing the field more. But only time will tell. I mean, we are dealing with health. So last year, Tua did through for 3,548 yards, 25 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Not a bad year for a quarterback coming off a lot of a, a lot of concussions and, and injuries and just he's just never been healthy the whole time he's been in the NFL. And then when he is healthy, the, the coach pulls him. So he's not been able to live up to the potential that he had played to at Alabama. Okay. Now with that being said, what's always gotten his way, like I said, health. All right. Hopefully the jujitsu helps. Hopefully the weight gain helps. They say he's about the same size as uh, Russell Wilson is. So that could give him a little bit more, more girth, more uh, more bulk, able to take the pounding that it comes along with playing quarterback in the NFL. So uh, hopefully that helps. But when you're only projected to do 3,883 yards, 26 touchdowns, 12 to, uh, yeah, 26 touchdowns, 12 interceptions for a PPR of 257 and 16th ranked quarterback in the NFL. That's not going to get it most times. That might barely get you into the playoffs, but most times that's not going to get it. All right. So uh, at the end of the day, even with Tariq Hill, even with, well, hold up. They still do have about $25 million, or I'm sorry, $19 million worth of cap money. So at the end of the day, they have an opportunity to still go get D-Hop or go get Dalvin Cook, which would completely bolster that offense and give yourself some real blindside protection for Tua. Uh, at, at the end of the day, when you got a quarterback like Tua who has had the injuries he's had, back-to-back -back concussions, this, that, and the third, you want to do everything you can to do to protect him. And that means picking up that third running back who can do every single thing. They don't have one running back on the Miami Dolphins right now that can do every single thing. Run. Block. Catch. No. David A. Chain runs a 4-3. He can run. But can he really run? Wilson Jr. He can run between tackles, but how good is his blocking and his catching? You know, and so on and so forth through the running backs they have on their roster. So at the end of the day, if, if it would be advantageous for them to go out and protect Tua. I'm not going to say they're going to do it, but if they were to do it, man, you might get some more win probability out of that boy. All right, so next, you have Josh Allen coming in at number two. Now, just because I'm putting him in number two does not mean that he will finish the season second-ranked team in the AFC East. I'm just saying that he's the, the second most talented. All right. Josh Allen has all the tools. He can run. He can pass. He can read the defense. He can make some check downs and some reads, but he's not Aaron Rodgers. And I don't even put Aaron Rodgers on that high of a pedestal. All right. If you just look at the stats from last year, then you got Josh Allen throwing 4,283 yards, 35 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions. After that, he comes back this year and is projected to do 4,163 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions, okay? What held him back last year was the scheme because they don't have a running game. Hopefully, they were able to rectify that this year, but we will only time will tell him only, only the Lord knows what's going to happen up there when it comes to the running game. I mean, they don't even get the ball to James Cook like they should, all right? They had Zach Moss at one point. I, I really don't understand what's going on with the running game up there in Buffalo, but I believe in the system. Um, we're not the system. I believe in Buffalo, not really the system. And I hope and pray that they do rescue this young man and give him an opportunity to po possibly be successful. Because right now, the scheme is holding him back. Next, now we get to number one, Aaron Rodgers. Yes, the quarterback, starting quarterback for the New York Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Yeah, he out here, man. He done brought in his homeboy, uh, Randall Cobb, brought in Alan Lazard. Uh, 
I believe that uh, he, he's working well with Makai Becton and brought in another offensive lineman to kind of uh, kind of help things out. But at the end of the day, I'm not sure how much that's really going to solve the problems that are so. I mean, let's call it what it is, man. It's worrisome. Okay. You have right now, if you are a Jet fan, you have a running back that's coming back from a torn ACL, torn cartilage by the name of Brees Hall. Then you really don't have stability at the backup quarterback position because Zach Wilson is only Zach Wilson. Then you don't have really good. I mean, you no, know, you got good backup running backs. You got Marco, Michael Carter. I'm not sure about James Robinson, but Michael Carter is a very good backup running back. If you were to out, add Dalvin Cook right now to the to the system, which would be him coming to the exact same system that he ran when he was at Minnesota, that would be you setting yourself up for for success. The uh, the Jets with Dalvin Cook would be a match made in heaven right now. I believe that would be something that could take. The Jets over the top. But what say you? Hit me back in the comments. Let me know, man. Let me go back through the list with you. So, number four quarterback is Mac Jones. Okay. We know who he is. We know what he's done. We're hoping that he can do better. Next, after that, number three, you got two attack of Loa. Okay. Health concerns are his biggest issues. Number two, you got Josh Allen. Scheme is a problem there. They don't run the ball enough. Okay, and then he's beefing with Stephen Diggs, so you don't know what's going to happen. Number one. Number one problem, or I'm sorry, number one quarterback, which is also could turn around to be the number one problem for the New York Jets, especially since they are now doing hard knocks with the Jets. Yes, I just told you they are doing hard knocks on HBO with Jets be a lot of drama, a lot of problems. Not saying that I'm not expecting it, but when you see it you, with your own eyes, then it just makes it more apparent. But um, I digress. You know what I mean? You got Aaron Rodgers, uh, and his biggest problem is himself. If he could get out his own way, he could become one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. But the problem is the boy can't get out his own way. So, and you can't make nobody do nothing. You just got to tell them what you can. Hopefully, they'll take in the advice. And then hopefully the next time, they won't do the same thing. All right, y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. Stay safe. I'm going to holler at y'all, man.